Hi, I'm Clover Lalazar. Censorship, repression, hardship might seem like the antithesis for artistic growth. However, a persistent desire for change and self-expression manifested itself in every corner of the Soviet bloc. Now, for the first time anywhere, the New York Public Library for the Performing Arts has brought together the stories, performances, legacies of this vibrant arts community in the exhibit Revolutionary Voices, Performing Arts in Central and Eastern Europe in the 1980s. Come on, I'll take you on an overview. Revolutionary Voices lies at the heart of an extensive and exciting five-month-long citywide festival that celebrates the performing arts in the former communist states in Eastern and Central Europe that are now the Czech Republic, Germany, Hungary, Poland, Romania, the Slovak Republic, and Slovenia. The exhibit is the result of a collaborative effort involving more than 25 international cultural centers and arts organizations that are not only honoring, but paying homage to a set of artists that deemed creative license and self-expression as sacred, despite the ubiquitous presence of the Iron Fist. Revolutionary Voices represents an international artistic collective that anticipated the colossal political and social changes that occurred in 1989. Most people were thinking that anything under communist regime is dark and gray and dreary and there's nothing going on. Everybody's wearing, you know, black shoes and... Um, but underneath it all, there was a really, really alive underground and cultural life that people had to keep kind of to themselves. And um, most of these uh, theaters have never been, well, not most, but a lot of the theaters have never been outside their own countries to, to perform. One of the festival's participating theater groups, Poland's legendary Theater of the Eighth Day, not only performed Wormwood in mid-November, an autobiographical unsparing vision of life under martial law in communist Poland, but also has bestowed the festival with something equally personal. With Theatre of the Eighth Day here this morning to read from their own files, the secret files, and then to see those files here and some of their personal, like one of the gentlemen from the Theatre of the Eighth Day was talking about his suitcase that exists within this exhibit and how emotional it was for them and how in some ways odd to, to, to look back to the difficulties of that time and to look here and to see that somehow the simplest things in their lives are now revered because the transformative spirit that was created because of the work that they and others did. We decided to focus on six different countries and um, by focusing on these many countries it was inevitable that there will be many performances that you know will be sort of delegated into this exhibition. And then um, the sort of the most essential and the most um, like appreciative experience that I had through the curating work was that what we need to know and we always need to remember that these are performances of um, dissident artists many times or artists who were not allowed to perform in public which meant that they had their own tiny audience, they had their own tiny spaces where they performed and because nobody or no official archive or official um, theater institute would take their work and would make sure that it will be preserved for future. They had to make their own personal archives and they had to make their own personal collections. The exhibit, which was culled together over a three-year period, is decorated with all manner of historical and personal artifacts that illustrate the courageous voice of performing artists during the ironclad 80s. It's relevant because there are people uh, governments across the world that are attempting to restrict people's freedom and I believe so strongly in, 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 in personal freedom, the ability to express oneself, the ability, the ability to travel where one wants to go if they can, and just um, a sense of respect and honor for each human being. And that kind of respect is, not, is non-existent in some countries. And um, I've always believed that each one of us in some way has a responsibility to make some sort of change. I mean, in, in our case, we're telling people what it was like and what people did to make it change. And although one might think time and distance separates us, Revolutionary Voices is here to show us that there is nothing like time and distance to grant us 
a unifying perspective. What are some of these questions that people that can still be addressed in the theater today that may not necessarily be addressed right now? Revolutionary Voices will be on view at the Vincent Astor Gallery of the New York Public Library for the Performing Arts on Amsterdam Avenue and 65th Street through March 20th, 2010. Clover Lalazar.